Would be Robbie LeBlanc helping the guys on Odyssey sound even better. We got him back. Good to see you, Robbie. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Awesome. Great. How else are you? All right. So so. Come see. Come saw. Oh, that's good. Well, welcome to Center for Spiritual Living, where we believe that everything is a creation of God. That means you and me and us and we and everything that happens this morning. If you are here for the very first time, we absolutely embrace you as an honored guest here among us this morning. Settle in, just let yourself be carried on the wings of spirit through our singing and our meditation and our celebration together. You're absolutely welcome here. There's a connection card inside your program. We would love to have you fill that out to the most complete degree you choose. It'll help us find out who you are, how you found us, and ways that we can stay connected with each other. If you came back for a second time today, welcome back. I hope that this continues to stimulate something in you that is awakening you to your own magnificence as a creation of God. And for those of us who have been coming and keep coming, it's so good to have us all back together again. Before we move into some information sharing, one of the things that we love to do around here is to celebrate life and to celebrate beauty. And we have a beautiful life to celebrate this morning via these amazing flowers put together by Larry Thompson. They are sponsored this morning by Jackie Hines celebrating Reverend Cindy DeLong's birthday, which was Friday. Yay. Happy birthday, Pooh Bear. Yeah, it's great, awesome. Uh, so that's wonderful, and I want to share with you some information so that you can uh, continue to uh, ignite your spiritual reality. Uh, we have um, our giving statements are available for the last calendar year. If you gave in an ident identifiable way, please pick up your statement at the office door on your way out this morning. That will help us save on postage, and it will support your tax returns uh, for 2015. Uh, young lady, would you please come forward? I would love that. I would like to introduce you to, oh, would you like a handheld? Um, we're going to pick up number three. This is Penelope Pendragon, a.k.a. the Wishing Fairy, about Wednesday night. Yes, I am going to be here Wednesday night. Now, a lot of you guys may know me as Judy Poteet's daughter, but at festivals and fairs, they call me the Wishing Fairy because I teach people just like you how to get your very best wishes to come true. And on Wednesday night, that is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> so come in early for a bucket bowl and some Il Chi Kong. Gong? Il Chi Ki Gong that's to it. soothe your soul. Oh, that's nice. Yes. And is, is your presentation Wednesday going to rhyme? Yes, but not all the time. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. All right. So that is an uplifting moment on uh, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, as she said. Uh, before that, starting at 5.30, our Bucket Bowl Soup Fellowship starts at 5.30, then at 6 o'clock, a wonderful half hour of moving uh, movement meditation called Il Chi Gong is upstairs at 6 p.m. for a love offering. I invite you to attend any or all of those experiences in the middle of the week. Uh, we have our classes starting this coming week already. Our winter classes are starting up. One called From Awakening to Freedom. You've actually heard about it. Uh, Laura Hallett has written that song. Class. I don't think Laura is going to write us. She might write a song, but she probably won't <laughs> sing it. Um, anyway... <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, the class is called From Awakening to Freedom. It's based on the amazing book by Mark Singer called The Untethered Soul. So uh, check that out on Tuesdays. It's a brand new class. Our Beyond Limits class starts Wednesday. That's going to be a Wednesday morning class, and that begins this week. The Roots of Science of Mind begins on Thursdays this week, and we're going to highlight one today, Colleen Tanaka's amazing self-created class called Journey Inwards, and Colleen's here to share about it. Good morning. Good morning. Um, is anyone here interested in changing anything about your life? <laughs> okay, so then one. maybe I'm There's speaking one. to There's the right people. There's one in the back, Sheila. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I was driving over here, I was thinking about what to say, and I guess what came to me is, if you want to change your life, this is a great class to take. End of the story. I can't change anything in my life that I'm not aware of. And sometimes things can change instantaneously in my life the minute I become aware of something. Just an awareness of something can instantaneously change my life. So what I know about journal writing and all the people that I've shared it with over a long, long time is journal writing is a very powerful way and I teach techniques in this class for us to access our inner knowing and become more aware of what we want, what we don't want, what's limiting our lives, and it's powerful. And I know that 10, 15, 20 years later, people are still using these journal writing techniques in their lives when they need clarification about things in their life, when they're dealing with stress, when they need to resolve conflict. It's powerful. It's very practical. So if this resonates with you, I'll be at the education table afterwards, but if there's something you want to change, and lots of us have wanted to change things in our lives for a long, long time, and it can get really frustrating, like, what the hell? Like, how long does it take to change something? Or why don't I change something when I want to so badly? So this is a class to really tap into deep awareness about what's really going on inside us so that we can shift things. And I would guarantee you that if you take this class, your life will change. I guarantee it. I'll give you your money back if it doesn't after. Uh, but anyway, so if that resonates with you, I'd love to see you and talk to me afterwards. And I'd love to see you in the class on Thursday. Thanks. Thank you. Did you all hear that? She offered a money back guarantee. I'm just saying, you don't hear that that often in truth. But wait, there's more. Um, so all of those begin this week. The information is available in the lobby at the Empower You table. And we, you can pay as you go. It's a wonderful way to empower your life in just magnificent ways. That starts this week. Stop in the lobby on your way out. Um, if you currently serve on one of our kitchen crews on Sundays or Wednesdays, would you just raise your hand? Because I've seen a bunch of you here, and some of you aren't on, on duty today. But So you can see them. They always sit near the back. And do you know why that is? It's not because they don't like me. It's because if they're on duty today, they get up early to go over there. They don't get up early. Well, they do get up early, but they leave the sanctuary before we're finished so that they can go prepare the way for you. They are amazing, dedicated volunteers. And so if you are interested in finding out how to join one of those teams on an occasional Sunday or a Wednesday, or if you, and if you are currently in one, on one of those teams, we are literally having an all-hands meeting on Wednesday after the wonderful uh, service on Wednesday night. All of us are going to go join together over there in the great room. We're going to uh, talk together. We're going to hear the new leadership team's you know, vision and philosophy, and we're going to talk about what's working. We're going to um, investigate ways to improve so that we can continue to create this powerful fellowship and what I'm calling the best fellowship times in Las Vegas. So if you currently serve or are interested, please do come Wednesday night. We're going to meet after the service. In a couple of weeks, on Sunday, January 31st, our wonderful and dedicated outreach, international outreach team, our Global Heart Connection, is having their first luncheon of 2016. Uh, this, all of the proceeds, everything that they earn through the tickets and anything else that's, that's uh, available that day, 
goes directly to their, uh, their partnership efforts with the Center for Spiritual Living in Nairobi, Kenya. So uh, the adult uh, ticket price is $10. Children under 12 are $5 for a full magnificent lunch. You can get your tickets that day. That's the last Sunday of January. If you want to find out what becoming a member means, uh, a member of this Center for Spiritual Living, we're going to have uh, three Sundays to explore that beginning February 21st. The last two Sundays of February, the first Sunday of March, we're going to have our membership orientation. Please do consider that. It's a free class. Sign up in the lobby if you would like to become or are interested in finding out what it means to become a member. Valentine's Day happens to be on Sunday this year, and so we are going to celebrate love in lots of forms that day. If you have an image, a picture, a graphic that just, when you see it, it ignites that sense of love in you, we'd love it if you would submit it to the office. Bring it in or scan it or send it to Mary. The email address is in your uh, handout this morning. Whatever that is, we're going to celebrate what love means to this community in that way. If you are in a couple that would like to recommit yourselves to each other publicly that day, we are also going to have a recommitment uh, ceremony that day. So we're going to have love just spilling out the aisles that day. So sign up in the lobby either way. Did you bring something wonderful to eat today? I saw some things coming in the great room this morning. Raise your hand. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so Liz, or whoever's in charge this morning of the Prosperity Acceptors, please lock the doors, because it looks like there's a lot of food over there. We don't want, oh no, you can't get in. The door's locked. Oh well, sorry. Um, So there you go. Thank you for doing that. Next week, if your last name starts with M-N-O-P or Y, consider bringing something. We are self-sustaining in this way, and so if nothing shows up, you'll have coffee. That's all, you know, there you go. And finally, I want to give a shout out to those of you who bid on Gourmets for God this year. Thank you very much for uh, bidding and winning uh, on the Gourmets for God fundraiser this year. And for those of you who have paid your winning bids, we are especially grateful uh, that you have done that. If you have not yet paid for those items that you bid on, please do. There is a table set up in the great room. You can enjoy the fellowship over there. And please do pay uh, because we count on the commitment that you made by placing the bid in the first uh, place. So um, thank you for that and please do pay up this month. You're a great blessing. And that's enough, isn't it? That's enough information. We're done with information. So we're going to sing. We sing. We love to sing in this community. I'm going to ask Lynn and Teresa to come forward. A wonderful song by Eddie Watkins Jr., who began his new thought career right here in these rooms. If you would stand up, if you're able to, we're going to sing We Come Together in the Name of Love. And um, I think I'll just do this. Thank you. And there's some instructions, so follow along if you would. All right? All right. Take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, I recognize the God in you. I recognize the God in you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. Oh, we come together. 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 We come together in the name of love. We come together. We come together. Okay, here come some more instructions. Take a look at the person next to you. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, God loves you and I love you too. I love you and I love you too. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. Oh, we come together. 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 person next to you. Now look at the person next to you. Say namaste, I bow to you. Say namaste, I bow to you. And feel the love in the sanctuary. Feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. Yeah, we come together. Yeah.
around, shake a hand, get a hug. Introduce yourself to people you don't know this morning. As we move into this morning's contemplation time, please silence your cell phones. Thank you. Let's begin with this week's affirmation in your, from your program oh, or on the screen up there. You might choose to cut it out and read it aloud uh, to remind you of the truth of your being. Right? I am the beauty, the love, the light, Greece I experience all around me. I see this in everyone and everything. We are one. Now take a deep breath and let the music take you into a silent place, followed by the morning's invocation. Deeper and deeper I surrender. 
At this moment, I invite you to continue to relax and breathe deeply. Begin to think and to let the cares of today and the past week drift away from your mind as we continue to acknowledge God's presence. The theme today is there is only one life. We see all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. Ernest Holmes, our founder, has written that there is nothing more important than the realization that since we are surrounded by infinite intelligence, we are immersed in limitless wisdom. We are surrounded by divine wisdom love, and intelligence. So divine guidance is ours for the asking. There is always an answer to our questions. Each person has his own sphere of action and receives guidance as much as he or she is able. So, Father, Mother God, as we know that God is all there is, and we dwell in the knowledge that your grace and love surrounds each of us, allowing us to be the perfect being that God has created. Your presence lifts us up to perfect knowledge, love, and action. So today, as we set our mind in worship, I am asking that each person gains the best experience of your presence, the presence of God, and the awareness that God is all there is as it binds us together into the whole. And as we experience this service, I bless all who can hear and see us and those who are in need of assistance. Thank you, Father and Mother God, as together we say, and so it is.
Good morning. This very first song I'm going to play is a song called uh, Gabriel's Oboe. Gabriel's Oboe. Uh, there was a movie called The Mission in 1996 with Robert De Niro uh, where he played a, a, a mercenary and slave trader. And then he met a, a Jesuit priest by the name of Father Gabriel. And through their conversations, Robert De Niro realized he did some really bad things in his life. And so he wanted absolution. So Father gave him some penance. And if you haven't seen the movie, it's awesome. But the song is called, it was from the movie The Mission. And uh, so it's the beginning of the year. So his mission was to find God. And uh, so mine continues to do that too. Well, that was beautiful. You know, happily, Robbie was already going to be here this morning to play with the choir. Unhappily, the choir isn't singing because Mary O'Reilly, its director, is not. She said, she texted me yesterday and said, I'm barking, <laughs> which means not barfing, barking, which means coughing and hacking and no voice and all of that. So the choir was called off, but Robbie stayed, and thank you for that. Beautiful. Yeah. I don't know if you can see this the way we can in the front rows, but Teresa leaned over and she goes, it looks like this is listening to him. It kind of looks like an ear in a way, and it's kind of like, it's really listening to you. It's awesome. <laughs> so here we are in 2016, and we are, along with over 120 other Centers for Spiritual Living, diving into our global vision, the global vision of our denomination for what is possible on planet Earth as people living uh, conscious spiritual lives. And that global vision has been shorthanded to uh, those, these words that are a world that works for everyone or creating a world that works for everyone. 
And the, the global vision is actually comprised of 10 really powerful, meaty statements. Um, and some of you had uh, expressed interest last week in getting a copy of the 10 statements. We're going to have a really wonderful and beautiful version of that available as a takeaway really soon. So that it'll be available throughout the whole year. And we can really see what it is that we are standing for as, as conscious spiritual beings, you know, imagining and envisioning a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. And this year, we're, we're exploring that vision along with uh, the tenets of our faith, the, the, um, what has been called our statement of principles, what Ernest Holmes originally wrote as what I believe and what we have adopted now as what we believe. So we're, we're weaving the two, our global vision and our statement of faith, our statement of principles together all year, and it's really, really exciting. And so um, this week, as we use January to really set the tone for that, to set the tone for the whole year and to explore individualized and individual ways that we can begin to realize that global vision of a world that works for everyone, the ways that we can do that individually, we're setting the tone for that in January. And today is really all about the first of those 10 points, which is this. We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. This is the way our global vision starts. We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. That is incredibly powerful. I'm I'm thinking, I can't imagine another world faith tradition actually making that declaration as the opening sentence of who they wish to be and how they see the world. We envision all people, all beings, and all life as expressions of God. It is completely inclusive, and it's radical, and it's powerful, and it makes infinite sense if indeed we believe that God created the heavens and the earth, right? God created everything. Therefore, everything is a creation of God. Everything is made from the image, in the image and likeness of God, from the substance of God. This makes absolute sense. I love the practicality and the, the, the logic of this teaching, and yet, So many people believe that God created the heavens and the earth, but then they also say there's other things about that aren't God. And we don't don't believe that. And as a faith tradition and as people who are believing something consciously that is pretty powerful and can be seen as pretty radical, we are in some mighty fine company. Here is um, a letter, uh, parts of a letter, uh, that was written in 1950. The letter was written to a man who was distraught over the death of his young son from polio. And I want you to just listen to the words of this piece of the letter and and see if you can guess who wrote it. This piece of the letter says, a human being is part of the whole, called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings, as something separated from the rest, a kind of delusion of his consciousness. The striving to free oneself from this delusion is the one issue of true religion. I'm going to say that again. The striving to free oneself from this delusion is the one issue of true religion. Not to nourish the delusion, but to try to overcome it is the way to reach the attainable measure of peace of mind. How do we find peace of mind? By eliminating our delusion of consciousness that we are separated from the whole. Who do you think wrote that? 1950. You might have heard of him, Albert Einstein. The man knew of what he spoke. And I was reminded in reading this and finding the, the, the actual quote in his handwriting, because it's written as in different ways in different places. Um, I was reminded of one of my first uh, teachers in this faith and philosophy, Reverend Patrick Pollard, who said, and I wrote it through my original um, copy of the Science of Mind textbook. The ultimate goal of the science of mind is to heal any sense of separation that we have from spirit, ourself, or others. The ultimate purpose, the ultimate goal of this teaching is to heal that sense of separation. Indeed, the one issue of true religion, in Albert Einstein's words, it's a a perfect match of that idea to heal ourselves of the delusion that we are separated from anything or anyone else. I think Albert Einstein was a religious scientist. I really do. He never claimed to be. I'm just, I'm, I'm baptizing him after his death. <clears throat> oh, wait, that's another faith that does that. I'm sorry. <laughs> never mind. Okay. <laughs> Ouch. So everything, everything, all people, all beings, all life, everything is an expression of God. 
What is expression? What is God expressing? Expression can be, it's the same word can be used of creativity. The creativity of God, the expression of God is the creativity of God. Therefore, all of creation as an expression of God is a creation of God. And we, as human beings with self-consciousness, we have this idea of I and self, and we are aware and we have conscious minds. We have been endowed with the amazing and powerful and awesome gift of being able to use that creativity that we possess because we are made in the image and likeness of God. And that creativity, that creative expression, we do use it every moment of every day of our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. The rough times in life are when we are unaware of when we are using the creative process or how we are using it to affect what's going on in our lives. So when we use the law of creation, when we use the creative process, the divine creative process consciously, we can be said to be planting. We are consciously planting seeds of consciousness into the rich soil of the universe and then reaping the benefits. We are using it consciously. Anybody been planting lately? Yeah? Good. When we are using it unconsciously, however, we have the experiences that can be likened to being buried. You know, you're, when you're planting consciously, you're actually burying the seed in the soil. But when I'm using it unconsciously, I feel like I'm being buried. Anybody have a burial experience lately? Yeah? I mean, we could do both in the same day. But the unconscious use of the law can feel like we are being buried. And these analogies are really appropriate because when we teach in this faith and in our classes, when we teach how the creative process works, how God created in the beginning, how we create now every single day of our lives, we use this analogy. And I want the practitioner students to be listening up because this will be on your written and oral licensing exams. But we use the, we use the, the analogy, the image, the, the, the process of the seed, the soil, and the plant. It's a brilliant and wonderful way to explain how we create in our lives. It's what our Science of mind teaching symbol means it is the threefold aspect of God and God's process of creation and our process of creation. We have an idea. I would like to experience fill in the blank in my life. Whether it's something material, some energy, some quality of being, some measure of success, whatever it is, I would like to experience that. That's my idea. That's my seed thought. I take that conscious idea, that seed, and I plant it in the rich soil of creation. The soil of creation is that aspect of God that knows how to create anything. And it doesn't know what it's creating. So it's that aspect of God that says yes to whatever our thoughts continually plant in it. This can explain why you get crap in your life. Because the law, the law this aspect of God, only says yes Oh, I'll never amount to anything. I'm ugly, I'm fat, I'm old. Yes, you are. And yes, you won't ever amount to anything. That's the aspect of it. We plant, and you know, we work on our, on our cleanup days out here, and other things get planted, and other things blow in, and the soil just grows it. How many of you were around when we had those monstrous and very frightening sunflowers out there, right? <laughs> it's like it doesn't know what it's growing, but it can grow anything that is planted into it. But it can't say no, and it can't change what was planted in it, okay? So if I plant those horrifying sunflowers, I'm gonna get sunflowers and not something small and lovely, you know? I'm gonna get a sunflower. It can't argue with what you place in it. That's the soil aspect. The invisible, almighty, infinitely powerful, but unconscious aspect of God. And the result is the plant, the form and experience in our lives. So the seed, the soil, and the plant are wonderful analogies of how we reenact that creative process every single day. And so we have that idea of the creative process and how it's created, and we marry then together the idea of each of us being uh, expressions or creations or creative expressions of God, and the notion of my title this morning, which is There is Only One Life. And this is Ernest Holmes in a lecture he gave in Beverly Hills, and it's, it's reprinted in the Beverly Hills Lectures book. He wrote, or he said, suppose each one of us goes out into an unknown country and works an acre of land. There are 250 acres, and each one will take an acre of the same land. Now, there are not 250 different kinds of creative processes in the soil. There is only one kind of creative process common to the 250 acres. But we are people, so each one plants his plot in the way he likes it. 
then everything is different when it comes up. And people who see it say, look, here are 250 individual acres of land. There's no such thing. There are 250 acres, there are 250 individualized plots of one creativity operating through the soil. And this is the beauty of our belief about and our understanding of God and the way God works. It is, everything is individualized. There is multiplicity. There is many from the one, but it's still all one. We are individualized, and every aspect of who we are is uniquely expressing that individualized aspects of God. And so our job as those individualized aspects of the one creative power is to plant seeds, to plant seeds consciously, to, pl to plant seeds of good, to see as God sees, to plant thoughts, images, and desires that contribute to a world that works for everyone and for all creation, not that don't contribute or, or take away from that. So you have also been hearing since the first Sunday of the month our book for this month, which is called Creating a World That Works for All. Uh, and it's written by Sharif Abdullah, and it's, um, it's still on order, but it's, it's also available Im immediately um, on Kindle. But the book, uh, Creating a World That Works for All, agrees with this idea that inclusion is the answer and exclusion is the problem. The idea that we exclude Anything or anyone from the way the world works is, is what's wrong with and what's not working for all in this world. The idea of exclusion, the idea of separation. And it is actually in this book that that Einstein quote appears in a different form, but a similar idea. So, you know, the, the people like people in Centers for Spiritual Living, like people who are practicing conscious spirituality, who recognize and understand that God is all there is, who have taken a stand for unity or for oneness or for peace or for cooperation, understand, all of us understand in some measure and know that life is calling us to know more, to know more of the truth that God is all there is. Those five words are so enormous, it could be a lifetime of practice going deeper and broader in that idea. And life is calling us to know that more. And what we also know is that not everyone is going to see what we see the way we see it. Not everyone is going to know what we know or the way that we know it. Some actively don't want that. They don't want to acknowledge that we are connected. They don't want to know the oneness of all life. They want to exclude. They want to say it's your fault, right? That's why this idea is not for lazy people or for people who have no courage. This idea is powerful, but it's big. And as we do our work and we apply our principles to our spiritual and through our spiritual practice, we begin, as I said a moment ago, to see more as God sees, seeing only one. We begin to know as God knows, knowing only itself. And you know what? That idea, that idea meets with resistance. If you haven't experienced it already in your life, it's out there. It does happen. And the resistance isn't out picturing as well, of course, so we continue to do our work. But that idea meets with resistance at least, and sometimes other things as well. Do you recognize her? This, this quote on here says, one child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. One child, one teacher, one book, and one pen can change the world. It's echoes of the quote that I used last week, the greatest threat to extremism isn't drones firing missiles, but girls reading books. Um, that is Malala Yousafzai. And if you don't know her by face, you probably know her story October 9th, 2012, she was a Pakistani teenager at the time, and uh, Malala Yousafzai boarded her school bus in the northwest Pakistani district of Swat. A Taliban gunman boarded the bus and asked for her by name, then pointed a pistol at her because she had insisted that girls have the right to go to school. He fired three shots. One bullet hit the left side of Yousafzai's forehead, it traveled under her skin, through the length of her face, and then went into the top of her shoulder. Incredibly, the bullet missed her brain, but she still had terrible injuries, and so she survived, and since that time, and through her healing process, she has uh, gone on to become an international activist for the empowerment of girls and women around the world, and the Taliban still threaten to kill her. They still have 
the idea that she needs to be killed. She addressed the United Nations on her 16th birthday. <laughs> Can you imagine? She had already healed, um, and she was addressing the United Nations, and she spoke of her, herself and her friends, and she said, they thought that the bullets would silence us, but they failed. And out of this silence came thousands of voices. The terrorists thought that they would change our aims and stop our ambitions, but nothing changed in my life except this. Weakness, fear, and hopelessness died. Strength, power, and courage was born. <laughs> CNN's Christiane Amanpour interviewed her at one point, and she asked if she feared for her life, and Malala responded this way. She said, the thing is, they can kill me. They can kill Malala, but it does not mean that they can kill my cause as well. My cause of education, my cause of peace, and my cause of human rights, my cause of equality will still survive. They only can shoot a body, but they cannot shoot my dreams. She was awarded the 2014 Nobel Peace Prize for her struggle against the suppression of children and young people and the right of all children to an education. So at the age of 17, in 2014, she is and remains the youngest ever Nobel Prize winner. She's amazing. And those are the kinds of miracles or miraculous seeming things that can happen when vision is clear and a courageous person stands firm in that vision. She says she's not angry at the man who shot her. I watched another interview online that she gave and she said she's not angry with him because he made a big mistake. <laughs> You know, the thing that he killed was her weakness, fear, and hopelessness, and that of many who have been drawn into her movement. That's the big mistake that he made. How could she be angry with him? It catalyzed this entire movement. That's the kind of thing that happens when one stands in the truth and remains true to the vision that there's only one here. And if we are looking to create a world that works for everyone and for all of creation, then we have to be willing to stand in that. So how do we apply that here? Most of us, if any of us, are not called to that kind of amazing action. What can we do? What can we do in our lives? What can we do in, our, in ourselves, in our spiritual practice? One of the things that we can do, that we are called to do and that we must do, of course, is to see everything in our life, including any opposition, as God in expression. Remember, everything will be okay in the end. And if it's not okay, it's not the end. She was struggling through her, her recovery, but she didn't give up. And because of that experience, this worldwide movement gained traction and strength. So we are called to see everything in our lives, even the opposition, even the challenges, even the, the horrible things, as spirit in expression, to affirm that. Our call is to plant positive seeds of thought and action, being and doing, to the degree possible. Maybe you're not feeling that you can be that proactive right now because you have experienced a week of burial experiences. Maybe that's the case. If that is the case for you, then what you can do is demand to see the presence or activity of God in it. You remember the Emma Curtis Hopkins phrase, the thing that I love a lot, this too is good, this too is God, this too is for me, and I demand to see the blessing in it. You can get mad, stomp your foot, shake your fist, God can take it. That's what we can do in our own lives, in our own day-to-day, moment-by-moment. I don't say mundane because every life matters. But the idea that we take what we are experiencing and we say, this too is God. I'm going to praise the, the, the awareness of the presence of God and I'm going to raise it in my awareness and therefore effect change on planet Earth. Ultimately, there is only one life. There is only one life. It individualizes itself, but it is still one. So we must begin to practice that. We must begin to see it as our life, as the life of the people that we encounter, our family, our friends, our environment at work. We must begin to see it more and to practice it more if we have any hope of bringing to fruition this vision of creating a world that works for everyone and for all of creation. There is only one life. It is God's life. It is perfect. And it is my life. It is your life now and always. And so it is. Namaste. Thank you. Mm. Yes, indeed. And so one of the ways that we can really anchor whatever is personally important to you about 
these ideas I've expressed is through prayer, through opening our consciousness and working with that divine creative process through affirmative prayer. It's a perfect uh, conscious use of that law. So I invite you to take in a deep breath as I invite our ministry of prayer to stand and surround this space with your presence. Ministry of prayer is the ministers, the practitioners who are members here, unlicensed here, who serve here. Uh, in many, many capacities, but in this way, we are honored and privileged to uh, stand in the truth for you this morning, and we pray every day. We pray that uh, right action is taking place in your life, that you are a blessed being as a, as a part of this congregation, and you may request specific prayer support through the, your connection card or a card that's out in the lobby or an email to our ministry of prayer. We are happy to address specific requests, but just recognize as we surround you this morning that we are in prayer every day knowing that God is active in your life, and it is a great blessing just to know that that's happening every day. So once again, taking a deep breath, and allow your eyes to close if that works for you. And with that breath, I just go to that place of knowing. Knowing as God knows, seeing as God sees, which is that there is only one. It goes by many names. It is understood in many degrees and capacities, but I call it God. And in that one small word, it encompasses everything in creation and beyond. One life, one intelligence, one power, one presence, one reality. One almighty creator that created everything in the beginning. God is all there is. And in that first moment of creation, God already existed fully and completely in perfection and wholeness. And yet there was this desire within the mind of the infinite to know itself as physical form. And then the universe just came into being. That first unimaginable blast of energy into form. And we come from that. The entire universe comes from that. This whole universe, the physical body of God, made in its image and likeness, and that's all that exists still. Yes, we can look out from our individualized bodies and brains and selves and see all sorts of forms of creation, and yet in this moment we recognize that it is one, one, one. And I unify myself with that which created me. There is no boundary. There's no place where God ends and I begin, where I end and God begins. It's all one. It's all that I am. It's all that I can ever be. And it's all that my life can exist within. This is true for me. This is true for all who hear these words. Because again, it is true of the entire universe. I accept it right here and now on behalf of myself and this entire spiritual community that we are grounded in this truth and we are enlivened by knowing it, by recognizing, claiming, accepting, and then living the idea that there is only one life. And we commit to recognizing it and to practicing that truth more and more in every encounter, in every moment of our day. And in this way, we are contributing to a world that works for everyone and for all creation when we refuse to accept a limiting belief, a separation in our consciousness. And we instead say, this too is an expression of God. I am so grateful for this simple formula. I'm so grateful to know the power back of an idea that says we envision all life as an expression of God. And I'm so grateful for the encouragement right here and now to practice it more than ever before, watching as our lives transform and the world becomes a better place. And so in gratitude, I surrender now. I release my word into that creative law that says yes. It only says yes. It always says yes. And it is saying yes in a greater way right here and right now. I surrender to that, knowing that all is well. It is good right here and right now. And together we say, and so it is.
And so from one form of spiritual practice to the next, we are still doing what we can consciously to anchor the message in our subjective mind and life by practicing this uh, experience of giving of our tithe or offering. It is a, a conscious act, another conscious act, just like prayer. Our spiritual practices are all and entered into consciously because it makes us uh, more aware of the life and the power of God circulating in our lives. This is what we are practicing now in giving an offering or a tithe. It is practicing the laws of circulation. And so I invite you to give with an idea that what you are giving is actually the substance of God, which is infinite. And as we give it consciously, we are opening ourselves up more to the receiving end of this same substance. And so we give in many ways. If you give outside of this room to this center, either electronically or auto-tithe, use your connection card to symbolize your gift as you bless it. Now, the rest of us who are giving here and now will bless it uh, physically with our energy, and then we will send it on its way. And so it is.
Beautiful. Thank you. We are so blessed, aren't we? That's amazing. Robbie has some CDs with him for sale. That's awesome. He'll be in the lobby. Stop by and see him. Thank him for this beautiful gift of today and support his work in the world. As we uh, finish today, I want you to go to the prayer room first if you would like prayer to really anchor this message and the idea of your life and God's life being one. See a practitioner for prayer in the prayer room. Then go look in the bookstore. You haven't seen it this week. It's completely different. It's like a whole new thing was built. This week, it's completely rearranged. That's over there for your pleasure. And then the fellowship time in the great room. So I invite you to stand, make a connection on either side of you. We're going to do a benediction as we prepare to go plant seeds of good in our world. So making that connection, please say after me, today I say yes to life. To freedom. To planting. To good. I give thanks for the power of God as me. And for the good that shines through me. This week I commit to planting good. And to living life. More and more every day. I am so blessed. And so it is.